Firstly, this review is strictly my opinion about the Final Mouse Tournament Edition. I will be comparing this mouse with the Logitech G303 Deadless Apex, mostly because I've been using this mouse for the past year, but also because both mice are more or less appeal to the first person shooter audience. And at launch, the G303 was priced very similarly to the Final Mouse. Now with the Final Mouse, I have been using it for the past few days, not only for my daily web browsing driver, but also for the main reason I bought it, and that's for gaming. I mostly play Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now I've played a few matches and a lot of deathmatch with the Final Mouse, so more or less I have formed an opinion of what I like and what I dislike about this mouse. I made an unboxing video, feel free to pause this video and watch the unboxing video real quick if you're interested. Now on to my initial impressions. The ergonomics of the Final Mouse feel really great. It conforms to my hand almost perfectly, and there aren't any rough edges that have irritated my hand so far. Mouse 1 and Mouse 2 feel very tactile with a nice loud clicking noise when pressed. The buttons are on par with the G303. The side buttons are also very decent, with a nice short activation, but they do feel a tiny bit fragile if pressed too hard. The side buttons are also bigger than the G303, which is really great for web browsing or pulling out nades in CS. Now the shell appears to be made out of two different types of plastics. The top plastic has somewhat of a rubberized feel to it, while the bottom plastic feels more akin to a generic Dell mouse. The ergonomics of the final mouse absolutely blow the G303 out of the water. The G303's rather flat design made it a bit awkward to hold, and on long gaming sessions my wrist would get a bit sore, an issue I've yet to experience with the final mouse. Now my favorite ergonomic feature about the final mouse is the scroll wheel, and holy moly the scroll wheel is the best one I've used. The notches are, are nice and tactile without them giving me too much resistance or being too loud, an issue I had with the G303. The rubberized band around the wheel is the best part as it gave me a nice non-slip texture and the rubber, rubber is very soft to the touch. The button on the scroll wheel is just as good as mouse 1 and mouse 2. I do use a bit of a hybrid grip but the palm grip and claw grip feel just as comfortable on the final mouse. The final mouse is also a tad bigger than the G303 and as someone who dislikes bigger mice, I am very happy with the overall size and weight of the final mouse. The sensor works well. I honestly did not notice any difference between the G303 or the Final Mouse's sensor performance. My crosshair pointed exactly where I wanted it, and that's it, honestly. It works. I did notice that my performance in matches was a bit better than usual with the Final Mouse. Whether it, it was a placebo or the ergonomics are just that good, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, I really like it. Now there is one major thing I dislike about the Final Mouse, and that's the hefty price. Currently on Amazon, the Final Mouse Tournament Pro Edition is priced at an expensive US$67. Some people may have to pay more with shipping, so it's really an expensive gaming mouse, and with that price tag, one should expect the same bells and whistles that other similarly priced gaming mice come with. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Now, with Logitech G303, those bells and whistles are included. Originally at launch, the G303 was priced at $69.99, but now you can purchase a brand new on Amazon for a bit cheaper at $46.75. The first thing I noticed with the final mouse was the second I plugged it in, the bright white LED turned on. The LED is much brighter than the G303 on the brightest setting. While it looks very cool, there are some things I dislike. Firstly, the light leakage on one of the side buttons. While not really a big deal, it is something to note on a near $70 mouse. Another issue with the bright LED is the inability for it to be turned off. Now, the final mouse does not come with a program utility utility that allows me to change the settings, which I will get to later. But that also means that without some sort of program or dip switch, the LED will constantly stay on, whether you like it or not. I briefly mentioned this, but for me, a huge bummer with the final mouse is the inability to change settings, because it lacks switches or a program to change it on the desktop. I do, however, have a DPI switch on the mouse that allows me to change the D DPI from 400, 800, 1600, and 3200, but that's it. If I w wish to change the polling rate, or if I want to disable or change a function of one of the side buttons, or DPI button, I'm out of luck. And this is when the G303 is worth the price, even when originally priced at $69.99. Now I understand that a driverless mouse could be a good thing for pro gamers or people that attend LANs, but let's face it, most people are not going to do that. If they did, the G303 already addressed this with the ability to store custom settings in the mouse itself. The G303 comes with a really neat utility tool for changing your settings. The mouse is very customizable with the ability to assign a different function or disable button altogether. I'm able to change the DPI in increments of 50 as well as being able to have different DPI levels for gaming usage and desktop use. I like sticking with 800 DPI so I disable that button altogether. I'm also able to change the pulling rate on the mouse. The pulling rate on the final mouse is locked at 500Hz. Another cool feature is the RGB lighting. The software allows me to pick any color I want. It also allows for a breathing effect and a color wheel effect. I'm also able to change the brightness and the rate of the effect I choose. 
The lighting on the G303 is not as bright as the final mouse, which kind of sucks. With the G303, the lighting on the logo and the sides operate separately, which allows me to disable one or the other, or both. Another feature that I have never used is the ability to tune the sensor to the mousepad surface. Being able to calibrate your sensor to your mousepad is cool, I guess, but honestly, I think it's more gimmicky than useful. But nonetheless, it is an optional feature at my disposal. So I've definitely been nagging on the finer mouse for a bit. Would I recommend it? It depends. If you're in a budget, the finer mouse costs quite a bit of money for the options you actually get. There are other mice on the market that cost less and with more features. Now, if the finer mouse was priced more economically, no doubt it would be the best gaming mouse for 2016. But the high price tag really holds me back from praising this mouse more than I have. However, if you're willing to spend the money and understand that you're essentially getting a bare bones gaming mouse, then you're in for a treat. Ergonomics feel amazing, buttons are nice and tactile, and overall perfect for games like Counter-Strike. Another thing I really like is the three-year warranty, as well as Final Mouse being very active in gaming in the gaming community, whether on their Twitter or Facebook, or in the case of Final Mouse Jude, active on a forum, which is something I really appreciate. Uh, the Final Mouse is definitely my brand of choice for gaming, and I look forward to seeing what the Screen 1 will bring to the table. Thank you. Firstly, this review is strictly my opinion about the Final Mouse Tournament Edition. I will be comparing this mouse with the Logitech G303 Deadless Apex, mostly because I've been using this mouse for the past year, but also because both mice are more or less appeal to the first person shooter audience. And at launch, the G303 was priced very similarly to the Final Mouse. Now with the Final Mouse, I have been using it for the past few days, not only for my daily web browsing driver, but also for the main reason I bought it, and that's for gaming. I mostly play Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now I've played a few matches and a lot of deathmatch with the final mouse, so more or less I have formed an opinion of what I like and what I dislike about this mouse. 